Hi guys, today we are talking about coffee and if it's bad for your teeth. Hi guys, today's video is about coffee. Why are we talking about coffee and if it's bad for your teeth? Well, coffee is a super popular drink. A study last year in 2020 in Australia found that three out of four Australians aged over the age of 18, so this was a survey of a thousand people across the whole of Australia, was that three out of four adults had at least one cup of coffee a day. So that's quite a lot of us. Of those, 28% had three or more cups. So it's a pretty common drink and I think it's really important that we have a look what kind of impact it has on your teeth. The short answer is yes, coffee is definitely bad for your teeth. And you might be wondering, oh, it's just the staining. Everybody talks about coffee staining. Coffee staining is actually not a big deal at all and it really easily comes off with a good scale and clean at your dentist. The real issue where coffee does the most damage is because of its acidic nature. So the acid level of a liquid is determined um, or measured by something called the pH scale. That stands for potential hydrogen. So a neutral pH has a pH of 7. So if we're looking at things that are commonly um, consumed with the neutral pH, cow's milk, for example, is about 6.7 and that that's fairly neutral everybody would sort of know from their childhoods that drink milk it's good for your teeth and you might have thought that it was just because of the calcium content of milk but it's also because milk has a relatively neutral ph um, something that you would be really familiar with that has a very acidic ph or that is very acidic um, is coke and that has a pH of 2.6 and everybody knows that coke's bad for your teeth and you probably would have thought oh it's just because it's full of sugar it's not just the sugar it's that it's really acidic as well so why is acid bad for your teeth well teeth are made from a mineral structure and what happens each time the acid goes over our teeth is that the minerals are sucked out of our teeth and it weakens them. So the critical pH for enamel, which is the outside armor of the teeth that keeps everything nice and strong, the critical pH for enamel is 5.5. So what that means is that any substance that goes over your enamel that is more acidic than 5.5 sucks the minerals out, okay? Um, so definitely when you have Coke, the minerals are getting sucked out of the enamel and weakening them. The critical pH for the inner layer of the tooth, which is called the dentine, is even more basic than that. So it's 6.2. So you don't need um, to have something quite as acidic for you to have damage to your inner layer of the tooth. So where does coffee lie in all of this? Well, we've done some experiments with our very nice coffee machine at home and we also used instant coffee um, to see if the different types of coffee that we drink have a different pH and if there's ways that we can consume coffee that have less of a negative impact on our teeth. Because let's face it, most of us can't live without a good cup or two of coffee a day. First up, we have a single shot of coffee here, and the pH is 4.5. It's about 37.8 degrees with a 64.8 degree milk. Just so you know, when you get a coffee from a coffee shop, that's about how warm the milk should be. So the pH, this is like a, a weak latte is what this would be called, is 6.1. Next, we're testing two shots of coffee with hot water. So if you are a long black drinker, this is probably what you'd make yourself or what you'd get from the coffee shop. So about 81 degrees and that's 4.5 pH. Now we're just seeing what happens if we cool it down. So now we're at about 23 degrees C and the pH is uh, less acidic now, it's five. So before, when it was hotter, it was 4.5, and then when we cooled it down, it became 5. 
Now, instant coffee. We don't drink instant coffee. That that instant coffee we borrowed from my mum and even she doesn't drink it. It's like quite quite past its expiry date, but at least we're just testing here. So 4.4 is the pH and about 80 degrees. For those of you that know my mum, it's not unusual that it's past the expiry date. <laughs> so here we've added some milk and yeah, it's less acidic, so 5.4. So from our experiment, we found some really interesting things. The first is that there didn't appear to be much difference if it was instant coffee or espresso. So from ground beans made fresh. Either way, black coffee is very acidic um, in the fours. So that will do the most damage to your teeth. So if you have an espresso or if you have a long black, that will be doing the most damage to your tooth structure. The second thing that we found out that was having milk with the coffee made it much less acidic. And in fact, if you had a latte or a cappuccino, that brought the pH into um, the non-critical area. So you won't be removing minerals from your enamel, which is fantastic. So all you latte drinkers can rejoice. You're not doing too much damage to your teeth. It was still in the range of doing damage to your inner layer, which is the dentine. So if you, for example, have um, recession where your gums have gone down and have exposed some of that inner layer of the tooth, the root surface, or if you've got severe wear already and you've worn completely through your enamel and um, we'll put some pictures up so you can see what we're talking about, um, where the dentine is exposed, having a latte or a cappuccino will still um, do damage to the inner layer of the tooth. The third interesting thing um, is that the temperature uh, has a, makes a difference. So pH is one of those things that is um, determined by temperature of the liquid as well. Typically, the higher the temperature, the more acidic something is. So if you have a scorching hot um, long black, for example, it is more acidic than if you have the same drink at room temperature or if it's an iced version. So whether or not that is actually gonna be like significant is, is um, probably we need to do further testing. But the main thing is that having it with milk is the real game changer. Okay, so to complete this conversation about coffee, we can't go without mentioning the other big impact that coffee has when you consume it. And some of you might have just noticed this anyway, uh, is that coffee gives you a dry mouth. So the reason coffee gives you a dry mouth is because of the tannins which um, you might go, oh, I didn't even know coffee had tannins. Tannins are famously found in wine, okay, and tea. Lots of people know that there's tannins in tea, but coffee is also quite high in tannins. Um, and the other thing that gives you a dry mouth from coffee is the caffeine. So you think, again, what does having a dry mouth matter? How does that impact my teeth? Well, saliva is one of the main things that protects your teeth. Without saliva or people who suffer from dry mouth have, uh, can have a very quick, severe impact on their teeth. The minerals that we were talking about before that the teeth are made up of, and saliva has these minerals in them and puts, the, puts these minerals back into your teeth to protect them. So without an abundance of saliva, your teeth can get cavities very, very quickly. So. Um, that is the other aspect of coffee, not just the acid, it's the fact that it gives you a dry mouth that um, coffee does all this damage to your teeth. So you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, coffee is the, so bad for my teeth, but there's no way I'm going to stop drinking it and I understand that. I'm definitely not telling you to stop drinking it. Um, what we will talk about now is the ways that you can drink it so you minimize the damage done to your teeth. Obviously, from what we were just talking about, the first thing is if you can have coffee with milk, that makes a huge difference to the pH. It makes it quite a lot less acidic. If you're a black tea drink, oh, sorry, a black coffee drinker, and you're like, there's no way I'm going to be drinking white coffee, or it's just too much milk, or whatever, then um, there are other things that you can do to help 
The first one is having or brushing your teeth before you have the coffee. So all the things that I'm about to recommend, they are not just for when you're drinking coffee, but when you have any acidic substance. So if you like to have orange juice, if you eat a lot of fruit, if you like to have wine, um, anything or kombucha, anything really that is delicious and tasty, these are all recommendations that will help. So first thing is brushing before you consume any of this stuff. The reason for that is when you have uh, the acid on your teeth or when you drink coffee or tea or whatever, the enamel becomes softened. So then if you go on brush, you're sort of like abrading away or wearing away that softened, more vulnerable tooth structure. Previously, we used to say, oh yeah, wait 30 minutes, but more recent studies have shown that even if you wait up to four hours, you can still do damage from the softened enamel. So first thing you do in the morning, get up, brush your teeth, then go and have your breakfast, your coffee, orange juice, whatever. The next thing is, and you might've heard this quite a lot, drink things through a straw. I don't know how um, you're gonna feel about drinking coffee through a straw, it may not be practical. So what I'm gonna suggest here is that reduce the amount of time that it's in your mouth. Don't swish the coffee. Swishes have a lot of um, erosion damage. And the thing about people who swish is that they often don't even realize they're doing it. So if you are a friend of a swisher, and you notice that they're swishing, maybe bring it to their attention um, because they're doing a lot of damage to their teeth. The other thing is don't sip on it a lot during, like if you sit there and you're working and you're having a little sip, little sip, little sip, the total time that your mouth is under this acid attack is a long time. So when you're gonna have, especially we're talking black coffee here, just try and drink it. Um, and not have it for long periods of time or sipping on it the whole day. The other thing I would say with that is to have water with it or afterwards just to reduce that acid residue. Um, another really beneficial one is to consume it with a meal. So not to have it between meals. There, um, if you have more than three of these acidic episodes between meals, then it really, really increases your risk of having severe wear from erosion. So. What that means is if you have um, like a coffee at morning tea and then a Coke in the afternoon and then like some fruit as well, all of these are little snacks between meals, then the rate of damage that you have is a lot higher than if you just confine your acidic exposures to actual meal times. So instead of having um, something that's really acidic, like a black coffee between your meals, try to have um, a glass of water and a carrot, you know, rather than something like an apple that is, that is quite acidic. The other thing is to avoid using whitening toothpaste. And the reason for this, again, is that um, whitening toothpaste typically are just more abrasive. So your teeth are already weak and then you're just scrubbing, scrubbing more of that enamel off. And contrary to what you might think, the harder you scrub doesn't give you whiter teeth. Um, you can see in the picture that the amount of enamel you have is the maximum as the tooth um, comes through the gum. As we age, that enamel gets thinner and thinner. The enamel is what is responsible for the whiteness of your teeth. So the more of that enamel that gets eroded away from drinking lots of acidic things like teas and coffees, the more yellow your teeth appear. And the more you scrub that enamel layer thinner, the more um, yellow it's going to be as well. Now, what are some of the things that having acid drinks regularly can do to your teeth? The first one is sensitivity. So that can be sensitivity to hot or cold when you're um, breathing in air. This is um, very, very common if you regularly consume acidic beverages throughout the day. The next thing that acid is responsible for is if you have lots of cavities or if you've had fillings done and they are always failing. So if you're one of those people that you go to the dentist, you get your teeth checked and cleaned regularly and you're always having 
fillings needing to be replaced or new cavities forming. It could be because of acid. So this is acid that you consume. So like if you sip on coffee all day, or if you don't put the acid in your mouth, it could be acid coming out like from reflux. Okay, the third thing that acid can be responsible for is a lot of wear and tear on your teeth. So if your teeth are getting shorter or worn down, acid can play a huge role in that as well. So these are some of the reasons why minimizing the amount of acid that your teeth are exposed to is so helpful for the long-term health of your teeth. And the other one is that it makes them more yellow because like we were saying, that enamel layer gets thinner and thinner. So the enamel is what makes your teeth white. As that enamel gets thinner, the inner layer shines through more and that inner layer is yellow, okay? What we've done today, I hope you found really interesting and you probably know a coffee drinker or two if you think that this is going to be interesting to them, please share it with your friends and family, especially if they are complaining of any of those things that I described before, like the sensitivity or their teeth are getting shorter, they're always needing fillings, that kind of thing, or if they're a chronic coffee drinker. Um, obviously, the experiments that we did today are just at home. They're not in a controlled laboratory environment. Things that we could do next time or um, that you could try at home even is to use different types of milk. If you don't use cow's milk, if you use a non-dairy milk, you could uh, test the pH of that. Um, but the main takeaway is that everything in moderation, enjoy your life and enjoy your cup of coffee. I know that I will be too. Cheers.